If you have worked any bit with Power BI, especially with DAX, I'm sure you would have come across this term called context transition. Slightly difficult concept to understand. And if you don't already know it, I've done two videos in the past, one on understanding it and the other one on a couple of tricky examples. I suggest that you take a look at that in case you do not understand context transition. I've got some really good feedback on those two videos. In this video, however, I'm going to be talking about simple context transition examples, which are really powerful and you can apply them to your Power BI models. All right, you, me, context transition. Let's go. All right, people, as the first thing, I would like to talk about the data model that we are working with. Uh, three simple tables. The products happens to be the dimensions, the calendar, and we have a sales table. Nothing that complicated. And using this, I have created a very simple measure, which is my total sales measure. And I'm going to show you that real quick. Total sales measure is nothing but go inside every single row of the sales table and then do a VLOOKUP of the price. Once you get the price, multiply that with the units and what we get is nothing but total sales. And we have created this simple pivot table, which is where total sales is shown across the months and the year. Now, the problem as the first example that we're trying to solve is that I would like to get the sales value of the best selling day. How do we do that? Before we start to solve the best selling day problem, let's just try to build some logic up so that we understand what exactly are we trying to do. In order for me to find out the best selling day, I would have to do something like this. Probably I would have to list down all the days. So maybe if I'm just maybe doing it against the month of January, I'd have to list down all the 31 days. So this is 1st of Jan, 2nd of Jan, 3rd of Jan, so on and so forth. And these are all the 31 days of the month of Jan. Once I have got all the 31 days, then probably against every single day, I write down what has been the sales of that particular day. This is nothing but my sales. Once I put down the sales, I'm just gonna take a look at this not manually, of course, this is going to be done by DAX, but then um, the DAX should take a look at this and then find out whatever has been the best selling day value, pick that up and present that right here. That's exactly what I would want. How do we do such a thing? In order for us to do this thing, what you need to realize is that we need to have this particular table, which is where one row means one date, second row means second date, third row means third date, so on and so forth. And against the day level, if I'm able to calculate the sales value, I should then be able to pick up the max value, find out the max and present it. Pretty easy. The problem, however, is that if you take a look at the sales table, the sales table has the granularity of the transaction. So this is one transaction and this is the second transaction. And you can see that clearly the days are duplicated because on the 2nd of January, you had two transactions. How do we solve this problem? I am going to look for a table in Power BI already in my model, which is at the granularity at which I want to do the calculation. My calculation is going to be done at the day level and we already have a table for that. The calendar table contains unique dates and I'm going to do this particular calculation in the calendar table. How do we do that? So I'm going to go ahead and start to create a measure and I'm going to call this as best selling day value. All right. What do I write here? I'm going to say something like max X, right? Go inside every single row of a table and which table would, be, would that be? That would be the calendar table. Now, once I do that, it goes inside every single row of the calendar table. One row means one unique date. And against that, it should calculate nothing but my total sales. I do that, close the bracket. Now, whenever you're using a measure in uh, an iterator function, that triggers context transition. I have mentioned about two videos that I have done in the past. You should really take a look at those two videos in case you'd want to understand what context transition is. But for now, this is good to go. Uh, this is going to go ahead inside every single row of the calendar, find out the total sales and give me the max of it. Very simple measure, but what you get here as an output is nothing but the best selling day value. All right, I built the measure. Maybe you liked it, maybe you don't. But how do we trust that this answer is the correct answer? How do we know that 192 and approximately 192 again is the correct answer for the month of January and February? Let's just run some validation tests against our model. To be able to know that our answer was really right, I'm gonna add two columns, which I suggest that you should not do it. It's, this is just for testing purposes, but I'm gonna add two columns to validate that our result was correct or not. One in the sales table, the other one in the calendar table. Take a look. So I'm gonna click right here, make a new column in here, and this is going to be nothing but my total sales. So we already have a measure for that, but I'm gonna create a column. How do we make a column? I'm gonna write the VLOOKUP function, which is nothing but related. Get the price of the product, multiply the price of the products with the units, and this is nothing but a row level total sales. This is, call this as total sales, column, don't create that. 
All right. Once we have been able to create a total sales column, this value that we have received is the transactional sales for every transaction that has happened in the sales table. But in order for us to validate the calculation, we need the sales at the day level. So let's just go back to the calendar table, which is where one row means one date and start to do the calculation over there as well. I'm going to go right here. Maybe I've just applied a couple of filters here that I will remove and I will create another column here. This is going to be, let's say, uh, day level sales again don't do it all right so what should be the calculation here what i'm going to do is i'm going to write like a reverse vlookup function like a related table function so if i write the related table function what this is going to do is this is going to go ahead and maybe pick up this particular date take a look at the sales table all the dates that match this date and it's going to give you like a table now if you don't really understand the related table function i suggest that you take a look at another video that i have done on related table and hopefully you'll understand that so i'm going to say something like related table not related related table the sales table what this is going to do simply is that it's going to find all the matching dates in the sales table that match this particular date and give you the entire sales table. I don't really want the entire sales table. All that I would want is some uh, value of the column that I have done. So I'm going to say sum x go in every single row of this table, which is related table and find out the column that we just created, which is total sales. Don't create that column. All right, close the bracket and press enter. What we're going to get is the day level sales. Now we were trying to validate these two numbers, which is 192 and again 192 for the month of Jan and Feb. Let's apply filters to our calendar table. So I'm going to go ahead and apply a filter of let's say year 11. That's first filter and the filter of the month of Jan and Feb. These are the two filters that we're trying to see it against. Now sort the sales in the descending order. And you can see that for the month of January 2011, we get 192. That's right. And for the month of Feb, we get 192 approximately again, which is also correct. We've been able to validate these calculation and we have been able to build these calculations using context transition and which is absolutely awesome. Let's just move on to example number two. All right, example number two, pretty much similar to for the first example, but this time I'm trying to find the sales of the best selling product. We again have the same pivot table where we have total sales month and the year. And in this particular month, what has been the sales of one single best selling product? How do we do that? Again, I'm going to apply the same logic as before. Imagine that we were able to create the listing of all the products like product one and product two and product three and so on and so forth. And then against every single product, if I was able to find my sales value right here, I could just pick up whichever is the max and write it right here. In order for me to do such calculation, I need to already find a table which is at the product level. Do we have a, such a table? Sure enough, we have that table and that is nothing but my products table, which is where one row means one particular product. In order for me to utilize that table, I can write a very simple context transition measure, something like a best product sales. I've already done that. I'm saying that go inside every single row of the products, which is where one row means one product against every single product. Find out the total sales. Once you find out sales for every single product, give me the max of it. And if you drag this particular measure to our pivot table, we are going to get the right result. Now I just do that. And what we receive is the sales of the best selling product. Pretty amazing. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and validate this measure. I'm sure you understand the validation technique and you can do that. But another very interesting question to take a look at, if you show this to anyone and you say that, hey, in the entire month, we sold about $1,200 of which 270 was given by one single product. The next question coming to you is that what was that product? We're going to take a look at the name of the product. But once we take a look at example number three, we'll come back to this example and take a look at how do we solve for the name of the product. But let's just move on to example number three first and come back and solve the name of the product problem. So far, the context transition problems that we're trying to build and solve were using the tables that we already had in the model. In this problem, we are going to use context transition on a virtual table. Let's just take a look at the problem. So we have year, month and total sales, and I'd like to get the sales value of the best selling region. Now, if you take a look at the data model, we have the products, we have the calendar, but we don't really have the region master. So we don't really have a table in which we can apply the context transition, go through every single region and find out the sales. How do we do such a thing? We're going to create a virtual table. If you take a look at my sales table right here in the sales table, we definitely have a column that shows us the region and we're going to create a virtual table from this column and then use that in the context transition. 
take a look. So I'm just going to go over to this table right here, make a new measure and call this measure as best region sales. All right. What do we do? I write a simple max X and I say, hey, first of all, make a table and you're going to make a table, a unique table for all the regions by the function called the values function. Again, if you don't understand what the values function does, I have done a video on that in the past. Please go take a look at that. So I'm going to say that, hey, in the sales table, I have a region. An easy way to understand the values function is that this is going to give you unique regions. So it's going to give you a table, which is where it's just going to list down all the unique regions. Once you have the unique regions against every single region, I would want to find my total sales. I could just write that measure, which is nothing but total sales. And I could just close the bracket and press enter. And what we have been able to do is context transition over a virtual table. How awesome is that? Once I drag that to my pivot table, what we have been able to get is the sales of the best selling region. I'm sure you can find ways to validate that. But now let's just go back to problem number two and find out the best selling product name. Okay, so this is slightly tricky. Again, what we'll do is we'll try to frame the logic so that we visually understand what we are trying to do and then go try to build some DAX. Here is what I'm trying to do. So in terms of the logic, what I would like to have is let's say a table. In that table, I'd have the listing of the products. This is again at the product level calculation. So you'll have product number one, like P1 and product number two and product number three, so on and so forth. And against every single product, I would definitely want to find my total sales value. So this is sales value, sales value, so on and so forth. But I'm not interested in the sales value anymore. I'm interested in the name of the product. That means in this particular table, I also want to have a column which should be the name of the product. And once I have been able to find out, let's say the best selling product, I would want to fetch the name of the product, which is the corresponding column probably, and get that name displayed right here. Now, you'd have to understand that the sum count min max functions would not be able to do it because they work on numeric fields and we would want to fetch like a text value, which is nothing but the name of the product. So we would want something to first find the best selling product and then like a text function to be able to capture the name right here and put that right here. But all of that, how do we do that in Power BI? Let's just start working. In order for me, to get the best selling product sales value, I would use a function called the top end function. I'm going to create a measure called the best product and start writing my top end function. I think I've done a video on the top end function as well in the past. And I suggest that you again, take a look at that if you don't already know the top end function. But for now, it's very simple. The top end function here, I'm going to say that I would just want one best selling product. So the end value becomes one. Um, and since I would want to do this in the products table, so this is going to be in the products table and that is done. Now I would want to have this by in the order of total sales. That means I don't want the literal first row of the products table. I want the first row of the products table, which is the best selling product. So I'm just going to write the measure in there, which is nothing but my total sales. Pretty good. I'm good to go. And I'm going to close the bracket. Now this is going to give you a one row table, right? And in that one row table, you're going to have all the columns of the products table. So you'll have a product code here. So like a peak C product code, then you will have a product name here and you'll have other columns of the product. And this row is going to be for the best selling product. But this table, which is the top end table is not going to really fit in this cell right here because this is the table and if you want to have a measure a measure needs a single value so i need to do something with the table to extract the name of this table so what do i do i wrap this top end function in another function called the concatenate x function that means that i'm no more interested to do the min max that is done by top end i however would like to get the name of the product from the products table so how do i do that i'm going to say hey concatenate x step inside every single row of this table and please find the name of the product, which is nothing but products table and the products column. Pretty good. And in case any single month, there are two best selling products. The names are just going to be stuck to one another. They're going to be concatenated. So I would want to think of a delimiter and the delimiter that I can think of is like an enter. So I can just write a unique character 10, which is nothing but enter and we're good to go. Now, if I drag this measure onto my pivot table right here, I should see the name of the product, right? Let's just do that. I'm going to commit, press enter and drag the best selling best product right here. And we get to see the name of the product. Now you can again run some validation tests 
to really see that if this product is the winning product of the month or not that is giving you this sales value but i see another problem which is that all of these are showing all the products because we don't really have the data beyond august in september every product is the best selling product because every product is giving you zero sales and because everybody is zero they all tie up for the best selling product so i don't really want to show up this measure right here when the sales do not exist which can be fixed very easily i can come back right here and i can say write a very simple if function and i can say something like if the total sales is not equal to blank and this is a horrible dax editor and um, I can just say that in that scenario, this is going to be uh, the case when you do the concatenate X, right? If sales is not equal to blank, then you do this measure, otherwise not. Pretty good. I do that and the table gets fixed and I now can see the name of the best selling products. Awesome. All right, that's been it. I hope you like the examples of context transition and they're going to be useful in your own models in some or the other way as well. Let me know if you have any questions around this and I'll be glad to reply if you can drop your questions in the comments. In the end, a big shout about my DAX and my Power Query courses. In case you are a beginner and you struggle to understand DAX, data modeling and Power Query to shape the data and build great models and solve practical real-time difficult problems as well, I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be super awesome. Thanks so much for sticking around all this while and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.